if I was to tell you that you could take the the projector off of that that light and then turn it into a shutter system and then turn it into a focusing light that does more than any native focusing light could do and then you can turn it into a beam intensifier or a beamer and then you can use it to reflect off of off of light stream reflectors to create more lights out of a single source and then I can tell you you could put a wide angle attachment in order to flood it out to 90 degrees and then you can use barn doors that are more optimized than anything else in order to just cut simple slashes. If I could show you and run through every single accessory that you can put onto a single data light, I think that you would you would find yourself in the most flexible and creative situation possible with the best possible outcome. I think that it's important to know that we have a, a perfect native focusing light head that just is capable of doing so many things. And what I'm trying to show here is some of the more popular and powerful accessories that you can put on your data light in order to completely redefine what it is capable of doing. And in each case, when you put on a new accessory, you're actually taking that functionality to its highest level. It's not just a, you know, a, an accessory to dazzle people to just say that it exists and it really doesn't have that much functionality. So uh, let's take a look at, as a system, what makes it so powerful to use so that you know what's available to you if you're shopping for Ditto Light gear. This is a DLED 7. It is the turbo LED bicolor light head, so it's 90 watts. When you turn on a Ditto Light, the first thing that you notice is this magical beam that we call a clean beam. Uh, it should be completely homogenous, meaning the color should be beautiful from left to right side, up to down, and in the center you should have very, very uh, shallow drop off all the way to the outside of the beam. Natively, using a Ditto Light focusing light, you should be able to focus down to about eh, anywhere between, depending on the model, anywhere between 6, 5 degrees to about 60 degrees. And we do that by turning the focusing knob here all the way out to about, yeah, 60 degrees in this light head. Don't worry about the light stream reflector. I'll go over that one a little bit later. Uh, but if, if this type of light ratio isn't um, enough for you, uh, you can use the first accessory here, which is a wide angle lens. And what this does is it takes your 60 degree spread out to about a... 90 degree spread. Uh, I use the light shield ring to just slide the accessories in and I've completely redefined what that does. Now, the cool thing about the wide angle lens here is that you can use these incredible rotating barn doors. It is an eight leaf barn door. It takes the beam from 60 degrees out to about 90 degrees. So with this attachment, essentially you're taking the light range out of a data light from one to 50. Um, it can, it, I mean, spotting down from seven degrees all the way out to 90 degrees is unlike any other light system with a simple attachment. You can also use the barn doors, these extra large, long barn doors, which rotate. They rotate so that you can get unique angles and cut some really beautiful shapes that you would normally not be able to get when you're trying to control light with barn doors. So I can get a really nice, tight, tight line if I want to. And I can also cut trapezoidal shapes because we don't light directly, we light from an angle. So if you wanted to try to get some type of trapezoidal shape because you're lighting from an angle, you can do that with this system. It's very powerful. So of course, if you're in an angle, this would start turning into a square. That is the wide angle lens adapter. Moving on. Shaping light is quick with dado lights uh, when you use simple little tools like this beam spreader, okay? This is a little piece of dichroic glass, so it has a really high transferal rate. Uh, you just basically put it where your uh, light shield ring would go, just like this. And then when I narrow down the light or focus it down, you're going to start seeing a beam that spreads across my wall. And it's very homogenous because a, light, a dado light is uh, already a very homogeneous beam. And as I turn this, you're gonna see that I can control where that strip of light falls. Now, why is that useful? I'm sure you can come up, you're the creative ones, I just show you what it does. It creates a homogeneous beam because we were giving it a homogeneous source. And you can rotate that beam really quickly 
uh, and get different results from it as you, as you use the focusing ring to widen the beam, the, the anamorphic shape gets wider. Now, I mean, let's just look at why that could be uh, important. If you, turned it, um, if you turned it parallel and you had two people sitting side by side in an interview, in a medium shot, you could actually light them both very evenly uh, without having to lose any um, light from a spot. You can actually use the spot as an anamorphic shape. Well, that is the beam spreader. Just consider how much time you can save by getting an output like that, a result like that, by just doing that. Not too bad. It's a beautiful result, and again, that is used across all of the different data light focusing head models. You can get that for all of them. Back in with the light shield ring, this is the most fundamental of the accessories in terms of light management. I highly recommend that you use your light shield rings. The DP 1.1, this is the imaging projector, okay? Um, most of you who've used the classic data light head know that uh, this is a very important tool and in some cases, people only use their data light for this particular tool. However, I recommend really expanding and look at, looking at everything that it can do. Uh, this particular projector allows you to use gobos. Grab my gobo, drop it into the slot, and focus. Now you can see I need to widen out my beam in order to see the entire gobo. There I go. And my light. I have not turned up yet, it's at 50%, so I'm gonna bring it all the way up so you can see it a little more clearly there. And there you have it. Now, perfect resolution from a data light projector, something that I cannot say for any other system out there. That is the DP 1.1. The next is the DP 2.1. This is a dedicated shutter projector built because People were getting a little bit sick and annoyed of having loose leaf shutter blades in the DP 1.1, so we made a dedicated uh, shutter uh, system that allows you to have much more control over your shapes. Again, I'm going to get this in perfect resolution because that's the difference between a dead light projector and another system. And it allows you to cut really, really fine, fine, fine light in a way that I don't think any other system can do. This is a singular type experience, especially for tabletop users. But if you, if you really are using the different lenses, you can get these shapes to be as big or small as you want to, and it makes this system, again, extremely powerful. So the 2.1 is the dedicated shutter blade, and now, quite possibly, the most amazing, the newest of the accessories, which you will all be hearing more about, is a parallel beam intensifier. It is an astonishing piece of equipment. It's very simple. It is a large lens. This is the DPBA714 for the classic size head. Uh, again, all of these focusing light heads have common accessories. So what you're seeing with this light, all of these other lights can do that. The parallel beam intensifier uh, redefines what the light can do in its spot. So right here we have a native spot and the light is up at 100%. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on this intensifier. I'm going to get a very strange looking image out of it. That's not what I want. What we learned is that if you put the light into flood, the flood position, use the, the focusing ring, you get a new, very hot, very parallel source. Now, you may ask, why would I do that? Uh, you're not going to use that necessarily as a direct source. What we're doing with the parallel beam intensifier is utilizing it as a system by which to use light stream reflectors. So I am now taking this hot parallel beam with the parallel beam intensifier, and I'm completely redefining what this light is by reflecting it off of a light stream number three reflector, which spreads a hot parallel source to 50 degrees. But it, it reinvents the light. The, the light falls in a different way. It has a completely new look. I've elongated the distance from the light to its source. So I've changed the way that the shadows fall. I've gotten more realistic light, but I've, I've used, I'm still only using a 90 watt focusing light and I've already got 400% more output because this parallel beam intensifier is just magically warping that light into a hot new parallel source. If I move the light off of the reflector, you can see that I can dim it. Nice, huh? Pretty simple. But you can't do that with another 
you can't do that with another LED system. It's, it's, uh, this is completely singular. So look more into light streaming. Light streaming as a concept uh, begins with parallel beam intensifiers and using data lights. And uh, that um, lens is extremely powerful to use with uh, the focusing lights. Last but not least, you might as well be able to turn your data light into a soft light. Uh, and within the um, classic size and the small size heads, you can do that. Anything above a, a classic size head, and we want you to use a dedicated soft light. Uh, but if you're running gun and you need a beautiful soft light, the softbox attachment works on the classic size heads. It is double diffused, so there's a baffle inside, as you can see here. You can take that off if you want to to get a little bit more out of it. But when you need that soft light, you can do that too. So as you see, this is a bicolor light, 2800 to 6800. So yes, your classic size head, the DLED7, DLED4, they also can become soft lights. As you can see, it is extremely powerful to be able to redefine everything that this light head can do. And with each individual accessory, you're getting a new type of light, a new type of performance that completely redefines what it is. And that is what makes the Dedo light such an incredibly powerful systematic light to own.